Hello everyone and welcome back to another Tactics video. Today in store for you guys, I have a tactic that I am really excited to show you. This is going to correspond to our rebuild coming out this weekend with Toronto and I have been super, super psyched about it. Now, I predominantly am a good fan of defensive football. I'm a center back by trade. I played that growing up and I do love hard-nosed defensive football, aggressiveness. I like to see things like that. But one of the other things I do love to see are three in the back tactics. There's something interesting to me about the way that you can configure things if you're playing a really hyper aggressive press with a three at the back and the weird ways you can use players to press and win the ball and create different shapes and ideas and systems through them. And it's always been something I loved. And I've always been decent at creating threes at the back when it comes to FM or other games like that. Always been good at them in FIFA, always been good at them in FM. And today, I have one of those crazy ones in store for you guys. This has exceeded all expectations so far in what I've been able to do with it, and I am thrilled to bring it to you guys. So, I hope you're excited. Now let's get into the tactics board. So guys, we have a 3-4-3 three, three that I've built for you guys today. And that is obviously, as I mentioned before, it's something that I really find interesting, the way you can use this structure to create different shapes and different ideas and different understandings of how things work. So with that being said, let's get the right color selected and let's get into showing you guys what this one thing is going to do. So the big thing about this 3-4-3 three, three is it's very aggressive, very hyper aggressive pressing one. And that's what I'm looking forward to do. The idea of it is to create a shape that is pretty much a back four, a diamond of a back four, which includes the goalkeeper. Um, then, a in essence, it's going to be a 4-4-3 four, four, is what we're looking to create almost. And at times, it's going to be a 4-2-3 two, two, almost as well. And I'll show you what I mean as a, right now what I'm talking about with the shape. So... The thing that I'm looking to do is I want these wingbacks are going to be really aggressive. So their their roles to get forwards. These guys are going to be a little more inside, looking to get forwards as well. So what's going to happen is is that you're going to see the shape that I the shapes that I want to create are it's going to look like this. So we're going to have, actually let's not use that color. That's not a very good color for this. Let's use a uh, let's just use black, shall we? So we're looking at the this is the shape that I want to create here. So obviously. This is this little diamond that I'm talking about in the back here with these guys. So that's kind of what I'm looking at there in terms of that stuff. Now, the other things that we're going to have is obviously the way the rest of these players are going around. So the way that's going to work is this guy's running through the middle. He's running in these areas here. So they're running kind of towards this, this zone here. Now, these guys also are going to be running to the byline. But they're going to be more arced runs. They're kind of going to be arcing them a little more towards these areas here. So they're going to be kind of making those arced runs. These guys here, let's just shift these up so it looks nice and fancy. They're making more arced runs. And these guys are going to make the runs through this these spots here as well, like that. So in essence, what you create is, is that you've got a lot of guys running through the middle, different angles, different areas, and really all ending up in... Let's get the little... Uh, ending up in this area here. They're all ending up there, which is what we want. Because we want to make sure that they that these wide players here, so these guys here, get that ball into this into this area here. So this ball ends up right in here, where it can get that shot at goal. And that's the whole point of this, is I want to create a system where these guys have this little shape here. They can play the ball within themselves, move it around, have that support and help what they need with the, the center back stepping high, the other two center backs going wide. And then I want to make sure that these guys have the opportunity to get wide, get this into all of these five runners that are making these runs into the middle. So that's kind of the idea in terms of how I want to get the ball forwards. When it, ah, delete that. I want to make sure that these guys have the ball to get it, get it wide, or get one of these guys who can then play it wide. They go all the way forwards up here. They're here. Nine's here. Ping, ping, goal. And that's what I'm looking to do. So. So race this, and I'll show you a little more in the final third where we're looking at stuff. Actually, uh, yeah, we'll leave that how it is. So, again, I want the runners in these areas. So I want these guys to be coming and crashing the box in this way. We want to see them making runs 
like this, like that, and like that towards the goal. We want these guys in these spots around here. We want them making the runs into these gaps here. As I said, this guy arced runs like that, arced runs like that, because we want to have them end up in these spots here. Oops. Because we want them to have the ball in these spots here, two and three. That's where we want them to mainly be. Now, the six, <clears throat> the center backs here are going to be positioned like so. So I want them wide center backs, and I want the goalkeeper like here. I want to be crazy, crazy aggressive with this. Because this is the shape that I want for these guys to have, which is have the goalkeeper pretty much create... Oops, sorry, let me get the straight lines back. I want this here. This is what I want to see from these guys. That's what I want, all right? Then you also have this angle here. I want it to be a little more like this. Because then also we can have a triangle created here between the six and the the six and the eights, and then the eights also have the triangle they can create, triangles that can get created with the nine as well. Because then we have the chance to create those shapes as well. I'll show you, I'll take out the runs so that it's a little clearer for you guys. Because in the final third, this is the shape that we're looking for to more than anything else is having it at look like this in terms of the the availability of stuff that we have so you see the passing network that i'm trying to create these three dictate it and then in here it's all really tight short passing because these guys get it wide then as we said they'll go to the touch line like that they get the ball ball into these areas here that's where you want that ball. And then it ends up here where someone like the nine can finish it. Because that's the big one. It's these guys getting the ball in this area here. They've got it here. They cut it back. Nine scores. And that's what we're looking for mainly. Is that we want to create these structures. Want to have wide center backs. Want to have them coming out wide and supporting. We want to have the eights making runs forwards. Making hard to mark. Creating spots. Because guess what? Nine's in. Oh, he's covered. We have the seven coming in. Boom, he can score. We have the eight coming in and making the and boom he scores so it's all about just getting these getting the shapes and getting the, uh, the players in the right spots so that we can get the ball wide to these areas here where these players the the wing backs get wide and get these crosses in and that's the whole goal we want to get it wide to them get them to get these crosses off and get it into the box because that's where everyone's going to be hammering it home and we're going to score our goals so we'll take a look how it's worked now and we will see who the best and key players are in the system and some stuff that you need to be wary about when playing it. All right, guys. So taking a look at the teams and we first start off with the Wolves who finished in fourth freaking place. Got Champions League football. Now, the team itself um, is expected to finish 15th in the league and we got them into fourth. So do we roll that information? But yeah, the team has been absolutely immaculate. Oh, come on, game. Unfortunately, FM is still working out some kinks in its uh, system. But um, if you guys can see, as I mentioned, we want to get our players scoring the most goals. Those ones, Matias Cunha, uh, Mateus Cunha scored the... Oh my god, I'm going to lose my mind. So, he played up top, scored 21 goals, he had the most goals. Player that played out wide, at right back, got 16 assists. So, as you can see, exactly what I told you exactly worked. We had the wing backs overlapping getting into those amazing areas getting loads and loads of assists i mean you can see he had 12.29 xa this season absolutely incredible so worked to a t look at the data here that's fine we're keeping it on the ground that's not a concern um in terms of the passing fewer passes accurate passing that's fine lots of crosses inaccurate crossing is a slight concern but we had a ton and ton of crosses so Cross the per game, you can see with the highest, which is what we were looking for. So that's really good to see. And then movement, dribbling, that's all right. We're, we're mainly caring more about the crossing as the big thing here. We look at the number, the uh, error losing possession really in that area a lot, which is great to see. So aggressive shooting, we're taking a lot of shots. Uh, really high percentage ratio too, so we're taking really high percentage shots as well. High scoring, high non-expected goals, which is really, really good to see as well. 
aggressive shooting, which is good. And then Hainan Experience XG, slightly poor defending, so not the greatest in that sense. But a lot of the stuff really hitting the mark in terms of what we were looking for. But very good, though, overall. I'm really happy with that. We had uh, a lot of it. Uh, XG of 82.6, so really, really high XG. Lots and lots of goals in the right areas, which is good to good to see. We look at assists. Sarabia getting a lot as well. Nori getting five. Neto also being in there with some assists as well. Zhao Gomes playing in the middle, which is good to see because we want those players in the middle getting involved as well. They're going to help set stuff up. And even Sarabia, who's going to be crossing from one side, is also going to be playing there as he's playing off the right. So he was doing a lot of that. It seems like this tactic, especially for Wolves, is played heavily down the right side, which is interesting. But again, I'm not controlling that. I mean, Johnny himself had... Only two assists all season. Neto, though, 11 goals, four assists. So definitely working in that regard. But things definitely worked really well how we were expecting. The front three guys really getting a lot of the goals. And then these two should be getting more assists. But not everything is always perfect. We look at Bueno. He only played a few games. They brought in Arias, who didn't play at all. Um, that's unfortunate. But you know what? It worked well. It really came out and did a lot we were expecting. Knocked out in the third round, knocked out in the quarterfinals, but again, fourth place for Wolves is absolutely unreal and just pretty incredible to see. Now, they start off the season insanely well. Five, four to five loss in the first game is crazy, but then went on to beat Sheffield United, Everton, Luton, hammered Newcastle 7-0. There's one there. Um, beat Burnley, beat Tottenham, beat Palace. They did lose to Chelsea, but drew Liverpool, drew Arsenal, beat Bournemouth, narrowly lost to City. Beat Brighton and West Ham, which are good ones there. Did lose to Tottenham in the in the return. Same with the West Ham, lost to City, but drew United that time around. Drew with Brighton, did lose to Arsenal, did lose to Chelsea, but they beat Liverpool, beat Aston Villa, beat Bournemouth, beat Newcastle again. So you can see, really well done. Worked really great for Wolves in terms of the setup and everything like that. So really excellent for them and definitely a great performance. Um, now the other teams we looked at, FC Lorient who exceeded expectations as well. The team was supposed to finish 12th, and they got 5th place. So exceptional uh, again. We look, player with the most assist is the wingback in Benjamin Mendy, and the player with the most goals is the striker, Bamba Diang. So you can see the tactic works really well in this sense in terms of who we're looking for to get the assist. Silva had 5 as well. We also had the winger, wingers getting uh, some assists as well, which is not... Uh, Unexpected on top of that, but also Igor Silva didn't play as many games as Mendy. But see what I mean? It's worked perfectly. Mendy had all the assists from the left wing back role, which is what we wanted to see. He also picked up a few goals as well. But again, the players with the most goals, uh, sorry, the most goals here, the striker and the two wingers, which is exactly what we are looking for and wanting to get out of this. So that's great to see. Um, <clears throat> in terms of competitions, the team is knocked out in the ninth round, which is pretty far in, I think. No, it's not. Never mind. Um, but they did finish fourth, uh, fifth in the league. But look, didn't start off the season that well, but after uh, a few kind of unfortunate results, they beat Monaco, then they beat Montpellier, beat OL, beat Rennes, did lose two more games, then they beat Claremont Foot, Mets, went on a great run in this month, beating Marseille in it, knocked out in the cup when they shouldn't have been, beat Le Havre, and then decided to go on a really, really great run at the end of the season here. No losses in February with one win. Kind of an unfortunate march with the two to draw Lyon. Bad loss against Monaco, but then beat Brest, Montpellier, Paris, PSG, Nice, Toulouse, and Claremont. Uh, Claremont foot, and then two losses to really launch them up the table towards the end of the season. Now, if you look at the data hub, the team itself has actually should have finished in third. That's how good they were. They should have finished in third. They underperformed their XG by over 12. That's to give you an understanding of how bad it was. They should have finished in third. They should have had 65.5 uh, points. That's how bad it was. They underperformed so, so heavily, which is insane. So lots of dribbles really good at that. Lots of crossing, kind of an accurate crossing, which does suck. But again, tons and tons of crosses. But they were so bad in front of goal that they blew it. So it just shows you how good it could have been if they were a lot better with this system and did really a lot more. Again, look at the areas here. Lost in kind of those areas there, but again, losing a lot in that final, final third. Aggressive shooting, high-quality shots, a lot better. Um, aggressive shooting, a little wasteful, these guys were. Well, clearly wasteful in the way, the way they weren't able to do it. But 
again, like you look at the look how good that is. Non penalty XG, the shots per game, um, and the dribbles and stuff, really, really well done. But it's definitely a concern because you see that they underperformed so so heavily. But if you have a team with a really good finisher and really good strikers up top, I'm sure things will go a lot better. Because I mean, what's Bamba Diang? Yeah, 13 finishing, not amazing. You want something a lot better. So if you had a much better striker, I think you'd probably be in a lot, be in much better business. I mean, let's see. He, he yeah, he just performed his XG. I mean, who are the ones that really underperformed? Let's see. Uh, the the Brees definitely performed the right level. Yeah, a lot of the starters I think did really well. I mean, let's see. He barely played. He played 12 games. Yeah, we can see a little bit, but not too much. Again, not loads there. I'm not really sure who's who's the one that underperformed. I don't really know. Uh, maybe it's the center mids. I don't know who underperformed, but someone underperformed and it cost them. But yeah, it was it, it's definitely underperforming is a bit of an issue for them. So hopefully that can get sorted out and fixed. But we have Roma who finished second in the league, the best attack. That ball actually had the most assists. They had the most red cards and most yellow cards, which I love because that's also part of it. We want them to be aggressive and stuff like that as well. With the highest rating was Rasmus Christensen, who is a wing back. Um, we look at players with the most assists. Christensen was the second most. Spinazzola had seven as well. So lots of assists for the wide players who were getting forward and crossing. And Llorente had nine goals and six assists playing in that libero role, which is quite impressive as well. And really kind of insane to see. But definitely a really good impact from the from the team. And their right players are scoring. And then also we look at the goal scorers. My god, Lukaku. Someone with an actually good finisher. How good look how good he did. I mean, absolutely unreal for those guys in the right spots. So that's what makes a difference when you have someone with a really good finishing level. They can just bang in the goals and makes a massive uh, difference in terms of what the team's supposed to do. Now, if we look here. Again, a team that underperformed. Well, they got unfortunate that Napoli overperformed like crazy. Because they should have finished first, but they weren't able to finish second. Uh, lots of crossing, lots of accurate crossings. We can see how that paid off. There were fewer passes and inaccurate with them, which isn't great. And kind of loose in their possession. Again, headers don't matter as we're keeping the ball on the ground. Kind of unfortunate in that sense. But again, you look, losing the ball in the really the right areas. The shooting is perfect for what we want. The goal scheme, the shots, the non penalty XG, the crosses, it's all there. You're getting the ball wide, you're crossing a lot, you're dribbling at them. It's all in those areas. The high quality shots in those high quality areas, those cutbacks into the middle of the box in those right spots. It's making a big difference. The team is killing it and really doing well in those areas and I couldn't be happier with that. So that just goes to show how well it's done. They got knocked out in the round of 16 and in the quarterfinals by Lazio, but is unfortunate as they probably should have won the league, which does really suck, but it's how it goes sometimes. If we look at the results over the season, they smashed Napoli to start the year. Same with Inter. Then uh, Lecce drew with Atlanta, did lose to Fiorentina, which sucks, but then beat Lazio in the derby, hammered Torino, beat Strum Graz, hammered Cagliari, Copenhagen they hammered. Scoring goals left and right. Four against Juventus. Five against Siren de Tarna, Two against Milan. Beat Bologna and all these guys. Then smash Genoa. They surprisingly lost to Cagliari, which is kind of crazy to think. Lost to Mon beat Monza. Then a draw with Bologna. And then some poor losses there. But again, beat Milan. Couldn't do enough against uh, Matisse over the two legs. But beating good teams left and right. They did lose to Juventus here and stuff like that. But... I mean, I think they, they didn't do the double over Napoli and Inter, but beat everyone, really. I don't think they lost. I don't think they... I think they beat everyone in the league at least one point in the season, which is really, really good to see. So as you can see, clearly a very, very good side. Made a big difference, and they did exceptional running this tactic. So it's, that's just the thing. It's like definitely could have done a little better here and there, but really, really well played by the side. So to get into the tactic, it is a 3-4-3. With a positive mentality, we have a super keeper on attack with the instruction to pass it shorter. We have a wide center back on the right with pass it, a wide center back on support duty with instruction to pass it short, cross left often, shoot less often, and tackle harder. Same exact as the left sided wide center back on support. We have a libero on support as well with dribble more, shoot less, close down more, and tackle harder. We have two wing backs. The one on the left is cross more often, aim cross at center. 
Dribble more, run wide with ball, shoot less often, stay wider, and tackle harder. And the player on the right wing back is the same exact role. The central midfielder on support in the middle has no extra roles. They are just their normal selves, nothing special. The inverted winger on attack is cross less often, shoot more often, sit narrower, close down more, and tackle harder. The one on the left is the exact same. And the striker in the middle, who's an advanced forward on attack, is dribble more, shoot more, close down more, and tackle harder. Now, the in possession is we look to sit in fairly narrow in our attacking width. We look for overlaps on the left and the right. We look to play out of defense. We have a higher tempo of play with a shorter passing directness. We, take low, we hit low crosses. We look to work the ball into the box, and we run at the defense. In transition, we look to counter and counter press. We distribute the ball quickly to our center backs, and we look to do that by rolling it out to them. In our defensive shape, we have a high press line of engagement. We have a higher defensive line of engagement. We press much more often. We prevent short distribution, and on top of that, we get stuck in to be more aggressive to try to win that ball back. So that is our 3-4-3 tactic with the producing insane amounts of XG for each team, which is lovely to see, as it is a goal-scoring tactic where you hammer in the goals. And really, if you get those right players with the right finishing and right crossing attributes, you will be golden for this one. So, thank you so much for watching, everyone. I hope you guys did enjoy. If you want to catch up on more tactics like this, be sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on more tactics coming out to you guys that are available all week long. We've got tactics coming out at least every Tuesday and the possibility of Thursday as well where there could be some more for you guys as well as the fact that we have a playlist and a link to the Steam collection which has all the tactics I'll be testing available to download there as well as more as well as you can also see all the other videos on the tactic tests on top of that we do have a discord where you guys can join and even submit tactic requests I'll even write your tactic as well and you can see other tactics I've made on my own and just posted for fun so if you guys want to join all of that, get more tactics and get more of that information, feel free. And thank you again for watching, everyone. I'm sure to catch you guys in the next tactic video.